Welcome to Keep Schnacken. Oh, Schnacken. Japanese Kit Kats. Part two. Mm. Yes. Hi, I'm Lauren Jones. And I'm Simona Roy. Posing. And um, and hello, shoulders. Oh, yeah. I got some puffy sleeves Ooh. today. I don't know. I don't know what's happening to me. We look right like now. we're going on a date to a ranger game, though, but I'm like the more butch one because I'm wearing like... Well, and I'd be representing my NJ Devils. No! Because <laughs> red is... Red is also a ranger color. I... I... I'm going to go with my New Jersey Devils. We should I, do one. We should do an episode that is NHL themed as we get closer to dun, whatever dun, you dun, want. Dun, 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 dun. The Stanley Cup. Dun, 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 Me dun, pulling up my gloves, my equipment ready to throw down. I don't even need to. I will just hit her. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get prepared. When I, I just will take my earrings off and go. Um, <laughs> no, maybe we should do some. We'll figure out like a themed, uh, arena themed NHL uh, snack snack. Okay, fun. Um, it's in the docket. Yes, if if those of you don't know this about me, um, hockey is my favorite professional sport to watch, and I am a subscriber to the NHL Network, and I watch hockey every day. Um, couple games a day <laughs> a lot of digestion rangers are my favorite team um but uh they're not playing I, today but i'm, I'm not them. as big of a hockey fan i love going to a live event for sure it's super fun um i i will say that i have to, i am i if i have to be a fan of anybody's it's the new jersey i Devils. have a big problem with that i have a huge right. problem <laughs> but we haven't let it ruin our friendship yet, and I don't think no. it's going to get there. I don't think so. They actually have a really great young player. This is his second year. His name is Jack Hughes. He's killing it um, on the Devils, and I've actually enjoyed watching. I think maybe the pandemic made me a Wait, nicer. Wait, his name is Jack Hughes? Like, <laughs> Jack Hughes? It's Jack Hughes, but yes, when they're Jacques like, Hughes. when they're like, Jack Hughes, like, <laughs> that's how they say his name. <laughs> yes. Um, okay, great. Yeah, it, yeah, I'll get I'll get myself a jersey of that. Yeah, he's I mean, he's going to be I mean, he already, in my opinion, is on the up and up, but he's going to be something. But I do think that the pandemic made me a nicer hockey fan and maybe other hockey fans, too, because hockey fans can be mean and um, really possessive. And I'm no exception. Um, but I do think that I wouldn't say that hockey fans are worse than like strong baseball fans though too. I mean I guess there's there's these people in every every type sport. of sport or whatever but yeah I don't know hockey like is an aggressively driven sport it is aggressive yeah you know By nature so, yeah so you just you're automatically like nuts and the franchises are like it's the older the franchise the more extreme the fan, I think, in any sport, to sure, be honest sure. with you. So anyway. That but, makes sense. And there's always, like, the history of rivalries. Right. Cetera. And that's, I mean, in New York and New Jersey, like, you can't go, you know, yeah. that's, like, legit. So, but, um, but yeah, I think it's made me, like, I've actually been mo really invested in more of the other players and the other teams because um, I have time to watch more of the games. So when the Rangers aren't playing, I'm, you know, but I, I, I have, I, we're, this is not a hockey podcast, so we're not going to go. <laughs> Yeah, I'd have to quit I, because I have no expertise in hockey. I'm we like, would oh, never let Simona fine. quit. She would totally still be part of it. She just have to do some reading. Um, but if anyone has a hockey podcast and they want me on it, I'm happy to join to say hi um, and speak on behalf of the women who are fans of the mm -hmm. NHL. Um, so, Simona, we have to have a talk about your love life. Oh, right. My um, exciting a, international love life. Mona has an update about Oh, uh, Grandpa stuff. Hollywood. Hollywood. Grandpa stuff. <laughs> um, okay. Simona and Grandpa stuff. If you listen to the last episode, I talked about how I was sneak attacked by my love. Sneak attacked? Like, out of nowhere. We out of nowhere. Even be nice about it. No out text. No no phone call, no heads up about him starting this, you know, petrol head podcast. 
Hollywood. So I tried to like listen to the episode with Paul uh, and about Paul's life. And I guess I like I could have finished it, but then I forgot about it. But that's what tells you something that like I forgot to finish it or it wasn't like it was a top of. Yeah. And I was, you know, happy for him, happy for him talking about motorcycles, whatever. It's just grandpa stuff to me. I'm just really wondering how much I have in common. I thought that food would be enough to hold this relationship together, but sometimes food is not enough. Food. (laughs) Food will keep us together. No. Not enough. No. You know. Oh, no. (laughs) Oh no! <laughs> um, we're on the rocks. They are on the rocks, everybody. <clears throat> Simona Roy, I'm dying. Simona Roy, and Paul Hollywood, straight we're, out the press. Like, I mean, I am. I, I, I like to be committed. I'm very good at commitment, so I'm not ready to throw in the towel. But oh. you know, we're not connecting. Um, I did want to talk to people about like what happened to me this week. I forgot to tell you this, Lauren, but I had filed my taxes like the first person to file their taxes <laughs> this year. Uh, I don't like to wait on things. I'm not a procrastinator. I'm not, you know, not. like I don't like to have things <clears throat> pending. So, of course, I did my taxes really early, earlier than the first date of submission. So like I did on TurboTax and they're like, oh great, you're done, but it's not going to get submitted till February 12th. And I was like, okay. So, and then, um, I don't know about, I think that hopefully other people can relate to this, but I still have a lot of student loan debt and I forgot that I changed student loan payment companies. So I only had one 1098E that I had submitted. And then, of course, after I submitted it, the, another 1098E comes in the mail because I forgot I had changed companies. Oh. And so a 1098E shows you how much student loan interest you have paid for that year. And depending on your income, you are allowed to deduct it. And So my one quip with TurboTax is I was like, oh, okay, I have to amend this. I have to amend my taxes. That's pretty scary, you know, right there. So I'm trying to like, I call TurboTax and I'm like, how do I amend this? Then they tell me like, oh, the form isn't ready. The form is going to be ready. So the form becomes ready. And then I call them. I'm like, where is the form? Because I got an email saying that the form is ready. So then they have to do their own research. And then they're like, okay, it's a 1040X, blah, blah, blah. You have to mail it in. And it would have just been easier for them to just tell me. And this is where having your own accountant, I guess, is easier because they're more, you know, up to date with your personal case of like how much income you make, what's your AGI, what's your MAGI, et cetera. And so Boring somebody should have, stuff. Uh, it's adult stuff. People should know <laughs> there's a max amount of deduction that a person can take. And my one 1098 E had already hit that. So guess what? If I had amended it, then it would have just been for nothing. I wouldn't have gotten more of a credit or anything. Yeah. Well, that's the story of my life. I don't get, I guess I'm in the tax bracket where nothing matters anymore. Yeah. I'm sure you are. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's, it's very true. I'm on, like, I'm getting hopefully fingers crossed in a way. Like I hope that I will get there because I hope that I will get a raise and all that stuff. Um, But you know, well, the point of this story is that if you are doing your own taxes and Katie Weigel gave me the courage to start doing my own taxes. And so shout out to her. Um, and now I consider myself a tax expert. So the hubris is there now. So I could do your taxes probably. Um, <clears throat> you know, you, it's always important to just do your own research and go down the Google hole. I do. I'm a good Googler. So like these people would never have told me the right information if I didn't know, like I should be searching for this and looking for max deductions. That's also tax season. So. That's my little PSA. Do your research. Yeah, do your research, everybody. That's a lot. (laughs) Um, I have not filed my taxes yet. I mean, I will. That's okay. I mean, now I know that, like, also, first of all, we're recording this in mid-March. So, like, there's this way – I did it way too early. But I think that, like, that's fine, you know? Another lesson learned is make sure that all of your forms are in before you file. (laughs) 
Also, never let anyone sign your checks. That's from heavyweights. <laughs> <laughs> That's from the popular who's, cult classic heavyweights. I do love that movie, but who says that in that movie? Um, it is uh, Ben Stiller's father. Oh, <laughs> in real life, it's Jerry Stiller in real life yes. is Ben yes. Stiller's father. And also in the movie, he's his father. Right. He's of the course. Former owner of the camp before Ben Stiller's crazy character. No, no, no. In the movie, they're not related. I'm sorry. <laughs> in real life, they're related. In the movie, Ben Stiller's character, <laughs> just like a crazy workout guy, takes over a fat kid camp. Yeah. And um, Jerry Stiller is oh, because Jerry is like he was a good owner, right? He was because, a good owner, yeah. him and his wife. And it was really um, his, his wife. Real wife that was there. God yeah. rest both their souls. Right. Estelle, both, yeah. I think. Was that her name? Um, they're both very funny. Uh, we're very funny comedians. And uh, yeah, at the very end, when they're like saying goodbye to the camp before they let Ben Stiller's character come out to yeah. introduce himself he goes never let anyone sign your checks on the mic right before i mean he that is wonderful Great advice. advice i don't even have a checkbook well like, back then that was the 90s people still were i know but I, sometimes i think i need a checkbook i have and then a checkbook I'm, still I'm i had to write a check this week actually that's the news of the week for lauren i had to write a check this week well that's exciting you know i feel like gen zers will don't even know what checks are Mm -hmm. And also, a, like, who's teaching them? Who teaches people to write checks? I learned how to write a check in school, in my weirdo school. You know, I went to that weirdo yeah, school. Yeah, she went to weirdo school, no grades. Yeah. I, um, <laughs> she probably got a smiley heart for signing a check. Um, I, <laughs> I don't know how you got your grades. We did not get, like, <laughs> we didn't get affirmations of any oh. sort. Like, it was just, like, we had to feel it from within. There was no, like, outside. That's even crazier, yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Simona is a very well-adjusted woman though. I will say that. Um, so some, they did something, something right. worked. Yeah. Um, no, I, uh, there it's funny. Um, I, I watch old Seinfelds before I go to bed sometimes. And, um, it's in like the rotation of like funny shows. I like to clear my palate. I do a, a palate yeah. cleanser. Mm -hmm. This is another fact about me. A palate that, cleanse. That's what, that's what I do with curb. Right. right. Yeah, like <laughs> Curbs in the rotation, Seinfeld's in the rotation, Veep is in the rotation, Always Sunny is in the rotation. Sometimes they throw in like a friend or something if I'm really tired and I'm just like, I just want to pass out immediately. But I do you like put on like Office or Parks and Rec at all? Or no? I, I use Office still, Parks and Rec not as much. I used to do that more. <laughs> I feel like with Parks, some of those shows I want to get too invested into. Mm -hmm. Some of those 30 minutes are like good, quick, <laughs> fast, yeah. and I feel like. If I get a laugh in and then I'm like, all right, good, I'm done. But there is a sign, there is a Seinfeld where he talks about like, you know, when he does the jokes on stage beforehand, mm -hmm. I feel like I posted this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That whole thing. And I, um, and he's up there talking about someone who writes a check at the checkout line, which oh, used to happen back yeah. in the day. And I was yeah. like, I think I had posted it years ago to, because I was like, I think I screenshotted this in my phone or recorded it off the TV and sent it to somebody or whatever. Because I was like, this joke is not like, it, like in another couple of years, no one's going to even understand that yeah. joke. Now that we still understand it as people who live through it, our parents, our grandparents, but like, we are like the last generation that that. We are the happened. last generation because we're old millennials. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess they didn't have debit cards. No, it was like at the beginning when you just paid with a credit card or cash, I think. And then you could pay with the check. Jeez. I bet you could still pay with the check. I mean, it's still a tender, right? I guess. But like, oh, <laughs> like. But it's still a thing. If you want to be annoying this week, pay everything with a check and tell me how that goes. Yeah, if you're one of the few people who have checkbooks, like yeah, I don't I even do. have one. I, I could be like trying to Venmo the, the cash register, you know, in line. Yes. All right, so we're going to go to our segment. Snacking goes wrong. I have two today. One is an okay. addendum. One is an addendum. Lauren <laughs> went wrong. Okay. All right. So we all know that I've lived with the North and the South as part of my makeup as a human being, which I think has made me a well-adjusted woman, to be honest with you, um, because I'm not 100% hard but i'm not 100 percent. i'm not hard and i'm northern listen <laughs> just the way you just said that to me like a southern woman would retreat 
Um, you know, I'm <laughs> take it easy, New Jersey. <laughs> um, <laughs> there's, I think I'm an interesting combination. Uh, when we moved down here, I had, I felt like sports, you know, sports is a very big thing up North, but again, we were just talking about conferences and, um, you know, franchises that go way back Northeast, like the franchises go way, way back. So professional sports is kind of where it's at. College sports is very secondary in the South college sports is where it's at. And so I, you know, <laughs> again, I'm a hockey fan and I moved to Georgia. We did have a team for a hot second, but whatever. Um, the thing is, is that like college football is probably besides the years that we moved down here, the Braves were huge and they were doing really well. So Braves was a big thing. That was a professional is a professional sport. That's the baseball team. But uh, college football is like, was huge. Like I never seen so many college t-shirts and things like when I moved here, my middle school age. So in our little Debbie episode, <clears throat> so we all know that like, I like to mispronounce things and be stupid and whatever. And I kind of downplayed this coach and I, I, and I, um, and I know a few things about this coach who eats the double, um, oatmeal pies. And so I wanted to, I wanted oatmeal to cream pies, oatmeal cream pies. He's two of them. He made, he named for breakfast for breakfast. He namely eats them on game day. I'm not, but there have been articles where he did eat them, you know, every day or whatever. But I think you're going to actually grow to love him with some of the things that I found about him, especially when he lost the last national championship. Okay. So I also was like making fun of his name. Cause his name reminds me of like a drum company. Um, but his name is Nick Saban. I was calling him Nick Saban, like <laughs> drum company. So Nick Saban <laughs> is his real name. Um, I wasn't sure if he was still alive on it that honest to God, because I'm not paying attention to college sports really at the moment, but he won seven national championships for, um, the University of Alabama. So Alabama Crimson Tide, Crimson Tide is his team. That's like kind of unheard of. Um, he's actually like owns a charity with his family, is a devout Catholic man. I'm just, I had food in my mouth, excuse me. Um, he won, uh, he's one of the, one of the, he's the first uh, football coach, a college football coach to want to win an SEC t championship for two different schools. Um, there's only one other, I think only a couple other that have done that. Like that's also, he's won nine altogether. He has a track record that's like not normal. And he's still doing this in, he's into his seventies and they actually won again. But and I think this past year, but what's, I really liked this. There's an article in this thing called the Southern thing that talked about when they did leave, they lost in 2019 to, uh, to Clemson Tigers and little Debbie actually tweeted him oh which is like where I'm like he got street cred for us now right. to have little Debbie and so mm -hmm. um they said we baked Nick Saban's two oatmeal cream pies with extra portions of love this morning and the other part that I really loved about this and I got like retweeted all over the place and stuff though but after he lost he's seen eating one <laughs> like oh and so I go I, to me I was like he's part of the gang. He, like we can commiserate with his love of the snack so much that it was a comfort food after now, again, he's like a consummate winner. Um, right. and, and I will say that to do just a little bit of research. Cause I, I'm not, I'm not regularly watching cause f sports is weird right now in the pandemic and still a little weird going into this year. Um, and I have some feelings about a lot of the college football, uh, things that happened last year and how they were putting students at risk and what have you. But anyway, I did listen to some, uh, some, uh, interviews with him over the last few years. And like, he really cares about his players. He cares about what he does. Um, but he still gets down and he still needs to eat a little Debbie. So I just wanted to give him the justice he deserved on the podcast. <laughs> it's a lot of justice. You, you've, you've, uh, you've fixed it. I fix. I feel like I fixed it. I feel like those that listen to sports on this, which like apparently we have, I've heard some feedback on this, which is why I checked <laughs> myself at the door um, by more than one person. They were like, Lauren, you're Southern, get your stuff together. And I was like, let's not call me that, but like, let's, you know, but anyway, um, 
So, you know, we wish him all the best with his team, you know, Alabama Crimson, Crim, I can't even say it right, Crimson Tide. Um, Crimson Tide. Yeah. Crimson. I, I know, but like as a Southerner, you say it faster and it sounds weirder. Um, <laughs> <coughs> excuse me. Um, he's also in the Alabama Hall of Fame. I'm sure this guy is going to end up being in like a larger Hall of Fame. Um, I, I just think he's a good person. And I think that um, we just need to give him the credit where credit's due. Now, the other quick one, I, I almost wasn't going to do one, but then I found this and I was like, I have to share this. Okay. I did not know this. So in 2002, um, did you know that um, George W. passed out because he swallowed like too much of a, pre- of a pretzel? This sounds vaguely familiar i did not remember this at all um it was so did it like block his airway no he more like had that's what i thought and as i was reading through this he more like had a panic attack kind of a thing and well it is dry and salty so it could i don't know when there's a honey mustard one too so i'm thinking it's (laughs) schneider's but listen it got crazy like the spokesperson for pretzels like lobbyist you know like this wasn't even just like there's how there's one spokesperson for pretzels yeah so bill higgins uh, huggins at the time was a spokesperson for pretzels inc um the bluff the bluffton oh this was for the company okay maybe he okay sorry (laughs) my bad bluffton india based uh company makes pretzels for distribution under oh their distro for many companies that's what i was saying i knew this wasn't just one company so he's like (laughs) he's kind of a spokesperson for pretzels i guess um, and the Snack Food Association, they were like, they had to like make a statement about how like grateful they were that he was okay. But it was saying that the pretzel didn't go down right, apparently triggering a temporary drop in his heart rate that caused Bush to faint, um, according to his doctor. So, mm. and they say <clears throat> there was a lot of puns in this article about knots <laughs> and pretzels. Oh, it got okay. a little out of hand. Um, Jeez. It was, uh, this one was written, I think, locally in Greensboro. Um, yeah. And it, in the paper called The News and Record by Carol Tanhill and Charlie Roduda. But it was like kind of a hilarious article. I didn't, I didn't remember this at all. I'm like, I was totally grown in 2002. Um, but apparently it was a scare. Well, I mean, back scare. then, you know, even in 2002, like the news isn't as crazy as it is now you know no true it's not like so maybe it wasn't getting the headline that it would would have been on twitter or something right yeah Yeah. like that would have been trending for a while so like beware of pretzels um i did read which is crazy the things that people could eat like if they absolutely had to be forced to eat and this is like could be real snacking gone wrong but Uh, did you know that crocs are actually non-toxic so if you it was was like an apocalypse and you were hungry and you had a pair of crocs you could eat them you could eat them okay so isn't that insane that's gross so my friend tony manis and i um i hate crocs so much and yeah crocs are gross this guy that used to work at the workout at his old gym used to work out in Crocs and we called him Crocs. Like this guy doesn't even know this exists. I have so many pictures of this guy working. <laughs> what color? I hope they were like orange. I don't need, like, think they were just like normal color, like white ones or green ones or something. <coughs> so I have to go gross. through my history and find them. <laughs> but it was weird. It was just like weird workout attire. And so we always called him Crocs. And to this day, he constantly on Instagram still sends me like the funniest stuff about Crocs, like in random accessories about Crocs. And like, I just like was never a Crocs person. I know rest like people who work in restaurants wear them a lot. I know like they're good. for Mario Batali made them famous. Too. Did he? <laughs> well, yeah, I know there's a lot of, he's also, you know, a terrible person canceled. apparently. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He got canceled. Yeah. Canceled quick. Um, but yeah, I, I, I don't know. Like I know and that like there's, nurses wear them. Yeah, there's yeah, like a people purpose who are on their for feet. Yeah. There's a purpose for them. And I'm not saying there's not, but um, no, and they obviously hold the industry like yeah. in that area. <laughs> yeah. And it's just that, but there's so many, and there's a huge, I don't know if the store is still there, but every time I would walk past um, the Crocs store, like near Herald, Herald Square, I used to take a big picture of it for Tony because they'd always, <laughs> yeah, it was huge. And they always had yeah. like different 
different stuff in the windows and whatever. But yeah, I, I have to shout out Tony because that's hilarious. And I'm going to tell him that fact like after we get Yeah, it's like a that. good fact, right? Like in a pinch, you could eat Crocs. Hopefully they're new Crocs and not used Crocs. Yeah, that one. Yeah. Oh my God. But don't eat the charms. If you have the charms, on, I don't think those. <laughs> yeah, like Crocs are really proud of being non-toxic. I don't know if they can say the same for charms that I would put on Crocs. They put them on. Jesus. That's yeah, there's a lot lame. of accessories for for Crocs. Um, okay, well, that was um, I thought well, that was super educational. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, here I to guess, help. Yeah, <laughs> and um, just be careful of swallowing pretzels. And if you have a bad day, we all yeah, know. Make sure you like keep a bottle of water when you're eating pretzels. Yeah, like you're just asking for it, especially honey mustard. Like honey mustard ones. Like I know the Schneider's They've got ones, a lot of flavor. They got a kick. You got a they got to kick them down. Like, how are you eating that? Like dry mouth? Like, I don't know. That seems really, um, that seems like, a you know, a, like a, I don't know, a tactic to, to terrorize a person, like eat all these pretzels without water. <laughs> right. Like that's wow. Rough. It's like that whole, that's the challenge, the saltine challenge, you know, that's yeah. on the internet. That's what I'm going to do at my first dinner party after, <laughs> So I'm just gonna have a lot of salty food with nothing to drink. Like you can't drink. Anything. You're just gonna have people's blood I'm just pressure gonna go see up. What, I'm gonna see what happens. Like I'm gonna people see for are how long? Like heart they don't attacks. Have <laughs> Lauren's just planning on mass homicide. They're fiver. It's to see who really can hang. Yeah, yeah. or like you know, not have a blood vessel burst. Okay, it'd be a well, funny. It'd be a funny punked um, of a dinner party. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> uh, okay. And then the only way they get water is the ice bucket challenge. <laughs> Wait, speaking of ice, sorry, before we go to kick ass, I have to like, I have to talk about this because this seems so stupid to me. Apparently like Lizzo made this like viral or whatever. She called it the fruit coconut cereal. Yeah, you know who did it? Uh, Marissa, our friend did it. Oh, Marissa. I just, yeah. I find this to be, to call it cereal really gets my goat. First mm -hmm. of all, this mm -hmm. is just fruit, particularly berries and pomegranate in a bowl of coconut water. Why are you calling like this is like I, we have the conversation though. We can call anything cereal in this country. Liz, I got know, the but memo. like, but it's like you're putting ice in it. Like this is an actual thing. Like, I don't understand how this is a thing. Like this just seems like fruits in a bowl and you're splashing coconut water on well, it. Marissa Why is this did it. Thing? Marissa did it on her Instagram and we'll, uh, we'll have to ask her, but we'll get an addendum from her and ask her about it uh, Okay, because she said it did taste delicious. Um, but let's yeah, but ask, how is it more delicious? We'll than get like a quote a and bowl. ask. Right, we'll get a quote and ask her. Was it a fruit bowl or was it a like a cereal? What was your experience? You know, yeah, what I mean? like the experience is like, are you? Is this so different that it could be classified as like a different thing? Which it is might be a mental saying. thing where if somebody really like goes heavy into cereal and wants the carbs, and then they want. And it's, you know, a little watery or whatever. So it gives them that concept, like tricking your brain so that you have like the consistency texture. Maybe that helps. But I agree. I thought it was weird. And then I saw Marissa did it and I was like, well, Marissa's not weird. But she also. No, really but like, I Marissa. don't think it's weird to try it and have mm -hmm. an opinion. That's not the weird part. The weird part I is do. calling no, it a kidding. thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we all know, though, <clears throat> in America, <clears throat> any, any kind of cereal is possible. Just okay. go to Kellogg's. They will. Well, let you have it. All on right. to Kit Kats. On to Japanese Kit Kats part Ooh. two. Part two. Okay. <clears throat> so we did part one was what, how we kicked off the season. Um, for those of you that maybe are listening to part two without part one, I'm going to do a brief, brief summary of Kit Kats and why there are so many. <clears throat> Upon this level of research I did, I'm finding that there's some that they keep saying there's three. I, I've seen uh, mixed messages of how many different types, 300 to 400. I said 400 on the previous episode. I do think it's closer to 400. Some of them become discontinued. So maybe there's 300 in consistent rotation or something. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> Kit Kat, different flavors did actually origin originate in Europe. And then, <clears throat> the, then Japanese culture kind of was like, this is really cool. 
We have this thing called omiyage, which is a gift of a souvenir to a friend or a coworker or a family member of food, <coughs> namely food from the country that you visit. Ja Japan took it to the next level and made it like a city specific thing and a town specific thing where if you had an abundance of, you know, strawberries in this particular region of Japan, then they were going to infuse the Kit Kat with strawberries. And they namely changed the base that was just chocolate of the Kit Kat to have the flavor of whatever this new this new sensation was in that area. And so <clears throat> it is a huge, huge globally worldwide thing known that J Japan does this. Um, Simona and I both knew that this existed before we did this podcast, really wanted to kick off the season with it because we were super passionate about it. And then I became super passionate about this concept because I do gift food or wine to people's homes quite often pre pandemic. Simona and I are big gifters of food to even one another before the, before this podcast. Um, and now more so because now all we do is eat food and like, <laughs> um, together and it's just a celebration of <clears throat> like a gift of like, I went to this place. I'm, I'm sharing this with you. Kids, Kit Kats were specifically targeted. Um, one, because the way you say Kit Kat in Japan has a or Japanese it sounds like a good luck like Kit Kat it doesn't it's not too far off than the way you say good luck in Japanese um like good luck good day good kind of a thing uh, good fortune um and uh, so it like it was very close and because they're tiny and they're bite sized it's an easy thing to distribute to like your coworkers because like they stress the coworker thing a lot, friends and coworkers, where it's like you're not just buying the thing for one person, you're buying it for multiple people. And I have to say, uh, I recently did get invited to someone's home and I bought the strawberry Kit Kats for them from Super H Mart. So I think I'm gonna so make this is a tradition that like in my so life. in that situation, <laughs> is you going to H Mart? the place that you went to and you're bringing a souvenir from H Mart. It was more about if I, I just like the concept of omiyage. So I knew I was going to someone's home for the first time and strawberry is definitely one of my favorite things. So I made it more about good fortune, um, not just about the travel, but Got it was it. a gift of food. Um, I did, I mean, I went to Super H Mart specifically for our, our Japanese, I mean, our, for our Asian ships episode. Right. Right. So I was, uh, I was there for a reason, but when I knew I was going to their home, I was like, oh, this would be like, if I was traveling, this would be one that I would definitely pick up no matter where I was. And strawberry is a very common one throughout all of Japan and they look really pretty. They're just like prettier because uh, they have this, this light pink color to them. Um, so I felt like it was like a sense of me, a sense of my podcast, because this person listened to the podcast, and then a sense of the concept of Omiyage. I, th I really think this is something I'm going to keep practicing. Um, and I love the concept of the Kit Kat, because like most people like Kit Kats, you know? Yeah, it's true. So anyway, so that's the nutshell. Um, so this episode, we, we, there were so many that we got in this pack. We couldn't, there was no way we could try them all. Um, we are rating them. I'm going to keep a tally of what we rated today to Simona and then what would you want to recap though what we rated I don't last time? because I don't want to like have this episode go on really really long but a lot of ours were hot were middle grade so okay. I think what I'm gonna do is let's rate these um I'm actually gonna type them in the chat for myself like while we're in this episode okay um so if you guys are on the, no you won't see this on the video of the zoom but no going to say you guys could participate in the chat no <laughs> um, <laughs> for those of you that watch on youtube um and then i'll take the full tally and what we can do is put them in the notes for the episode and then we mm -hmm. also can talk about it on instagram um, okay if Sounds that's good. cool okay yeah. so as so this is how we're doing it simona went through picked the ones that we think would be the most interesting not that we were let down last time but like we were expect we wanted more interesting wanted, flavors yeah more um exotic flavors yeah. And we weren't hundred percent sure in, in picking them because we had to research what they said in Japanese and it was like a whole thing. So we think based on the packaging of these that we have picked more adventurous items, Simona is going to just go through the ones that like, she's going to pick the order she wants to go in. And then as I can throw in uh, some facts about 
what they're made of, um, I will. And that's how we're going to do this episode a little different than normal. A lot of taste profile, a lot of reaction on this episode, which I think yes. will be fun. Yes. So let's okay. do it. So I'm going to start. Uh, I think I'd like to start with more delicate and hopefully go to more bold. That's okay. my idea. And so I'm going to start. The first one is salt lychee and it's in a, it's a pink wrapper and it has, um, well, I say lychee because that's, or it's lychee is how you say it in, in, um, my language. Um, and if you've never had that fruit, it's like, it's similar to a grape. It has a pit in it. Um, you know, it's found in, uh, South Asia, Southeast Asia, East Asia, and it's actually my favorite fruit. It's fun fact. And I love it. And it has a really sweet, tender, juicy flesh. And so I'm going to see if they are able to capture it. And it's interesting that it's salt lychee because it's like, I don't know why you need to make it salty, but, um, yeah, but I feel like, Ooh, I'm opening it. Did you open it? As soon as you open it, you get quite a blast of scent. Oh, really? No, I'm opening it right now. Hold on. And it does smell like, um, lychee. Mm. It's like, I feel like there was one, the citrus one I tried last time. This yeah. It's like a. It, oh, yeah, it almost has like a soury. Yeah, I think that's where the salt comes in. You think that that triggers it? I don't know. But it definitely smells like artificial lychee, lychee, lychee. Okay. Um, all right. I'm taking it's one white, bar. so it's in white chocolate. White, I have a so thing about white, white chocolate. chocolate. <sighs> it's white in the middle. I don't taste anything, really. It tastes like lychee and lychee tastes a lot like, um, it's similar to rose flavor. Can you taste a little, if you were like thinking about rose, it's a little rosy. Yeah. Right? It has a little hint, but I'm just saying it's not like overwhelming. Like the smell, no. the scent is way more overwhelming than the taste. And it's like very white chocolate forward too. Yeah. I'm giving this one, I'm giving this one a three. I hate white chocolate like this much. I actually don't mind it because it's like a nice delicate for mm. me. I would give it a five. Okay. Um, okay. The next one I think we should go with. If I I'm didn't going. have anything special to say about that. Like, um, it wasn't rated as one of like the top 20. Yeah. Some I of these, no, no, meaning like the top 20 pro popular ones. Um, right. Right. I wouldn't think that that would be popular. It's too like light but it might be region specific to where there is lychee right like yeah that makes but it isn't it is very artificial lychee flavored it is very yeah okay um i don't have high hopes for this one but <laughs> this one i'm gonna go with cheesecake next and it is a yellow wrapper with black edges and it has um it has a slice of what looks like Italian cheesecake because it doesn't look like the most smooth texture, according to this picture. Um, it looks more like of a ricotta-based cheesecake, and it's it's quite a it's very like specific in that it's baked and it's got like you know a kind of golden brown top to this cheesecake. So Are here's you, the thing. I don't think you don't have that one. Unless this one is cheesecake. This was the only one I wasn't sure. I don't have anything that looks like that. Huh. All right. Well, so I'll go you into can go the, in. You can go in with it. And you why don't you try that one after? I have that one, but the one that I have has a coffee bean on it. That's white. Oh, if it, if you, if that's the case, our experience has been that then there's a good chance that this is probably cough like the same yeah maybe okay again white chocolate which obviously one would think with cheesecake i'm not crying then I'm oh not my god it. uh what it smells like cheese oh god i'm really glad i'm not eating this one i'm just gonna be it honest it smells okay. like which cheese does it smell like it not even gonna like try this just in case it is <laughs> it does it it's not exactly a cheddar does it taste, uh, does it smell like, like cheese sour? Yes. It smells Ugh. like cheese sour. <laughs> Gross. No, ma'am. Yeah. It has a horrible smell and it tastes like white chocolate. So I'm going to give that one. 
Yeah. That was sucky. <laughs> I wonder if they're doing something like where they're, I don't know, like you can do more with the scent than you can do with the. Seems like it. Yeah. That's interesting. Know. Okay. Like we're not hating on cheesecake. We're just hating. No, on- I love cheesecake. Hello, juniors. But like, come on, that sucked. That was like cheese. It wasn't cheesecake. It was cheese. It was cheese. Blech. Blech. Um, do you want to try that one that you had? That white one? No, or no, no okay. not if that's what you just ate. I, yeah, I'm no, no, no. Like <laughs> that's true too. But I, yeah, it's probably not the same. Then, I'm all right. Anyways. Hard pass. I'm good. I'm good. Do you have the Halloween one? <laughs> I do. Okay. Awesome. So, so we have what, one that says Halloween break. What does your guy look like? Um, it's just got two, uh, Oh, you're a jack-o'-lantern jack-o'-lantern. I have this, top. like, I have this version of like a cat Frankenstein and I really like him a oh, lot. He's cool. Yeah. And it's like, it's got the wrapper is like, you know, an orange color. Orange, yeah. We're wondering if this is just old school Kit Kat and then you know, yeah, J- I think that Japan's the, um, just like is, Halloween break for Halloween. I'm gonna, I'm gonna think that it's just a rag Kit Kat. That's my guess. Yeah, it and smells so like far, a rag. Oh, I'm excited about it because I love a rag. Yeah, this is a rag. I think mm, it's a rag. Go Japan. Okay. Mm. It's a good old rag. That's a nice palate cleanser. It is. Give me that PC any day. So that's nice. That means that they're like embracing American culture. A Halloween bit. should be celebrated everywhere. You know, it's like, it's fun. You get candy, you get to dress up. It's also a weird holiday, but. It is weird, but I've, I really have, I always loved trick-or-treating so much when I was younger. Not so mm-hmm. much the Halloween parties. Like I just want to go trick-or-treating. Yeah, everyone, yeah. my birthday is right by Halloween. So we always had the Halloween party. That's um, right. I had no choice. We had to have a dress-up party. The Halloween party <laughs> was my birthday party. Right. Um, okay. I hope you have this one because I'm actually super excited to try this. This is the purple one. Yes. With this. Um, yes, I think I have some facts about this one. Just like I, My guess, before you tell me what it is, is I think that it's like a purple potato flavor yes it's a purple sweet potato okay yeah that's what my guess was this one is says this will this one will only surprise americans is what the facts is about this so i'm gonna butcher the way this is said i I apologize to anyone japanese um i'm actually learning japanese well maybe you'll fix this uh (laughs) the okinan one i think is how you say it is a purple sweet potato swerve a a purple sweet potato uh, that is a fairly common ingredient in Japanese dessert. Mm-hmm. But American, it's very, it's a specific purple potato that you find over um, in the Asian side of the world. And um, it is, it's commonly used in, like, I mean, I feel like Americans will put some sweet potato stuff in some desserts, but I don't think it's as common. This is very commonplace. So that's why. Right. And I think that sweet potato is related to like Thanksgiving time for us. (laughs) Right. Maybe, but but in the South, maybe it's different. South, we definitely have more, there's definitely more sweet, uh, potato and things. Dishes. And, but again, it's not as desserty. It's more just like, let's throw something sweet in this savory thing, which I personally hate. I like to divide the two but i don't but but we know i don't mind a non-sweet dessert so this i'm i'm excited about this one um and this one is one of this one is one of their more popular ones too just like as people that buy and it's beautiful it's lavender yeah Mm. it's a beautiful purple color it smells a little much scent really to me it smells a little it's not like I'm smelling just like chocolate. I don't know how. No, it it does. You know, because there's it looks something like, in the profile. You can't tell what it is, but there's something else in there. It seems it, like because you said lavender to me, it also smells slightly lavendery. But I think anything sweet is going to have another sweetness in the profile. Kind of like you were saying. Um, yeah. With the other one. Um, All right. Well, I'm, I'm going to try it. I you she she bites both. I take them apart and bite one. No, what are you talking about? I'm always eating one. Oh, I thought you were biting both. No. Oh, this is interesting. It has a distinct flavor. I gotta, I gotta eat this whole thing. Hold on. 
I gotta, I gotta tell you in a minute. It does taste a little bit like, um, you can taste like a sweet potato essence in it, but it's like not a sweet potato that it tastes kind of like baby food or like pureed. Ew, that's you're ruining this for me. <laughs> Shut well, up. Nobody listen to what she just said. I'm gonna tell you exactly what it tastes like because nobody wants to well, whatever the fuck I'm allowed she just my said. own opinion here. So you're not selling it, Simona. I'm just telling well, you. I don't that. have to sell anything. I'm just telling you what I think. So what do you think then? Oh no, now I want to throw up thinking I just ate baby food, first of all. No, but it tastes like a pureed something, like a pureed potato. It what I was gonna say is it has a full, like a full profile. So the other ones I feel like we've eaten. Uh, this obviously has a white chocolatey something base to it too, but the predominancy of the purple potato or whatever they're putting in there it makes it fuller. So the color, blah blah blah. But like. It's it's a fuller taste. It's a fuller profile. I'm not fe feeling like it's pureed something. I'm thinking it's mixed with the chocolate, right? All of these. So I just feel like it has more depth in your mouth, and it does. It tastes potato. -y. It tastes sweet potato. -y. I don't know that I'm tasting pureed baby food. I think I'm tasting sweet potato. I feel like I'm tasting something that was. It's it's. It's not just sweet. It's not just savory. It's a good combination. I think this is my favorite one I've eaten so far because I feel like I can taste. I, I had to eat the whole thing. I had a little bit of an aftertaste too. Like it changed as I was eating it. Kind of like when you're eating um, a mashed potato or something where there's different flavors to it. And it's not just like a plain old mashed potato. I don't really like sweet potatoes personally, but I kind of like this sweet potato. I'm wondering if I like this sweet potato better than I like the normal well it does it's it's definitely has more depth than american yeah. sweet potato varieties what i meant was that when i said before lauren freaked out uh what i said about i'm allowed the baby to freak food. out about a texture and a word because there's certain things yeah that but you shouldn't tell me to shut up like it's, i didn't I'm mean to, to i don't think i told opinion. you to shut up but you i did you did tell me oh. to shut up um, anyways, what I'm wow, saying is Wow, trigger word. I'm sorry. Yes, it's true. I don't like to be told to shut up. Um, anyways, so what I'm saying is that when I met by like, it sounds, it tastes like a puree and like it reminded me of baby food because it's a pure profile. Like you said, with mashed potatoes, they sometimes add in garlic and well, all I'm that stuff. Well, I'm telling you that baby food is a trigger word for me. Yeah, but I, even though you said shut up to me, I didn't say shut up to you and yell at you. And it was a I just part. apologize. What else do you want me to do? Okay, I'm just letting you know that it hurt my feelings. Well, it grows. I almost threw up when you said that. So that okay, almost... I'll never say BF again. <laughs> I'll okay, never say shut up again. Okay, great. You're watching us solve through our problems on our podcast. Um. So, anyways, what I'm saying was that it's it tastes like it's um a pure form of this potato like it tastes like a mash of a potato where it's just one thing to me and like where it's not like a baked potato or it's not like a potato dish it just tastes like itself and itself is a higher level of any sort of potato sweet potato that we could get in america i think like, it's better i agree i think it's yeah. what, whatever that it's it's spelled okay O-K-I-N-A-W-A-N, Okinawan, I think is how you say it. Okay. And I like, if that's something that we can get here, that I would be really interested to cook with that. Because I feel like American sweet potatoes- uh, You can get it here. I've seen purple potatoes in yeah. stores. I feel like, um, um, I don't know. I I liked it better. If it tastes, I mean, obviously I'm not like going to be mixing it with chocolate, but- No, it tastes, it. it's definitely, there's something else there that where mm -hmm. it's like, it's, it's not smooth. just- is smooth a good word for it? It has a smoother it's taste. It's smooth, but there's like, you know, when you have a sweet potato here, it just tastes sweet. You know, there's not like anything interesting going on. There's something that it can't be explained. Like it's hard I to I just describe. don't. I'm not a big fan of sweet potato. Like I just, maybe they're just too sweet. It's not the taste I'm looking for when I want a yeah. potato, you know? Mm -hmm. so. Okay. Well, that was, that was tumultuous, but um, I... <laughs> But I did this one. I think is my favorite. I'm gonna give yeah, this one. Yeah, that one was very good. I'm gonna give this one. I think. I feel weird giving it like a. I feel weird giving it a ten, just because like what if there's Whoa. like a, 
an ultimate, but I think I'm going to give it a nine because to me, it's like, it's been the most interesting tasting one. So and you're I've, basing your score off of being interesting. I think interesting in that I like it like that. It's good. Um, yeah. But that like, you know, when I'm, when I'm looking at these packages, I want to be like, yeah, I'm eating something kind of, you know, different. Um, I don't know. I'd give it a seven because I thought it was good, but it's not something that I'd want to like eat a lot of or like, you know, it's, I, I like it and then it's different, but, and it doesn't taste bad. It definitely tastes good, but I don't know if it's something that I would like gravitate towards, I guess is my course, my, the way I'm rating it. Okay. So nine and a seven. Okay. All right. What's up next? Um, I think this will be fairly straightforward. This one is nuts and cranberries. So I don't assume like, and it's like, and this one comes as a one pack or like one stick. Um, I wonder what that is. Um, well, the, I don't oh, know. and it's totally crumbled on my, I don't know if you remember uh, when I was talking about the, the, um, the chef that makes these, if you mm. go into some of like the, like Kit Kat kind of flagship stores in some of the bigger cities, they have them also like close to the airports and stuff too. So people can buy these. They actually are like law, lo- like much longer Kit Kats individually packed as well. They just look real and they look really pretty, like the way they display them. Cause like the last one we just saw with the purple. So um, we have like a small, like fun size variety pack, but this one I think in real life would be much longer um, as a single. So that's why okay. they do these. Um, cause then they like to give people like multiple, ver- you know, multiple different ones. Um, so then you Got have it. a bunch of long kind of like those, what are those things called? Like the punk punky poke punky. Do you know what oh, I'm talking about? Like the pokey sticks, pokey sticks. Yeah. 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 Um, Oh, Oh, this I is really interesting. It's really interesting. So That's- it ha- seems to have crushed cranberry and nuts on the top, like a texture. It's a textured Kit Kat. Yeah, it looks like um, it looks and like it's a mosaic. Embedded. It's like a yeah. mosaic. So- Wait, yours is dar- mine is purple. Oh, mine is dark chocolate. That's what? interesting. That is interesting. Mine says ruby chocolate. What is oh, this? okay. Mine does. Mine doesn't say anything. Ruby chocolate is just another type of chocolate that actually came out a couple of years ago. So, it's, what is ruby chocolate? So, I it's made differently. It's not considered white chocolate. It's not dark. It's not milk. It's its own thing. Where it's just, I think it's probably more similar to white, and it's naturally that color. That's not a color that people have added. So, into like the chocolate. The cocoa bean or whatever is this color? Yeah, it's something oh. like that. Where it, the way it's processed, it makes it that different color. So um, interesting. So, mine for those that aren't watching the YouTube. Mine is lavender, similar to the color of the the potato one we just ate. Um, and then Simona's looks like a dark chocolate. Yeah. Wow. That's so cool. Dang I did it. have another cranberry one in my bag. Do you actually have another one? Because maybe that's what it was. Oh. Because I, I had two cranberry ones. Let me, Let me see if I can find the original one. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, I have a ruby one. Too. And I have the chocolate one. <laughs> All right, I'm going to try the ruby one with you. Oh, okay, I've never cool. had ruby chocolate. And I've I didn't even curious. know it was a thing. Yeah. How did I've you been... even learn about just like the cooking channels you watch? Yeah, I just stuff? know a lot about these things. Yeah. I'm always like trying to be up on it. But I've wanted, and also like on Baking Show, they do have worked with ruby, ruby yeah. chocolate. And I was always curious. Okay. Smells cranberry. It smells cranberry and chocolate, like the yeah. like the ruby chocolate. I'm interested in too now because it's a whole, a whole new experience for us. But it smells like chocolate, like it doesn't smell. Yeah, and it's like cranberry. I would say not overwhelming. It's really pretty. I like this mosaic on top. It's like a a ma- beautiful mauve color. You know, yeah. it's it's interesting. All right. Okay, you ready? Mm-hmm. Mm. Hmm. It's very tangy. I like this one a lot. It's so like, root. Go ahead. I was just going to say, I think Ruby chocolate also is known to have like more of this like tangy flavor. And then with the cranberry on top, it's good. It's not like, I know you don't like white chocolate and stuff. So it's not like white chocolate where it's cloying and it's just mm-hmm. sweet. 
just definitely has more like depth. I don't think like if somebody were to blindfold me and give me a piece of this, I don't know. I would say it's like a chocolate texture, but I don't, since we've never had it before, it's really, it's really different. Ruby mm-hmm. chocolate is very different. I want us to like, now that I know that that's a different thing, I'd like to try just like a, like Ruby chocolate on its own because there is so much flavor in this. Like it's literally eating kind of a mini trail mix mm-hmm. is the way it tastes. Yeah. Um, and I love a trail mix. That yeah. tastes so good. I love cranberry though. I'm not going to lie. Not, I don't like a cranberry sauce. I'm not one of those people, but like I like regular cranberries like in, in the Yeah. I like yeah. a dried cranberry. Yeah. You know? Um, mm. that was good. I, I think I'll try to see if we can find some ruby chocolate just to try on its own. Yeah, I think that, that would be ni- like a nice audible. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we're just gonna call this cran nut. Um I would can I have a lot of those? I don't know. So I would say I would give that like I would give it a seven again. I think I'm going to give this a nine again, because if I'm going to give purple potato a nine, I'm definitely yeah. going to give this a nine. OK. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. All right. And I think that we're on to the last one. OK, which... so before we go to the last one, I just want to um, apologize for saying shut up. It's not um, a nice thing to say. I will say that my valley girlness will just be like, shut up. <laughs> and I and don't I'll even try know to I'm saying it. I'll try to not be triggered by it. So. But I feel like I'm tri- I'm not triggered by a lot of things with food. We've talked like so far, like we haven't talked about too many. And I things. sincerely did not know BF. I'm going to just keep calling it BF would like sincerely. It make does, though. Like it gives me curl. like there's not much that gives me like a gag reflex. But thinking about like, okay. that texture and stuff like literally <laughs> made me want to. I could have on the spot this could have been a really different YouTube. Um, Got it. And I I also like, I should have remembered and like, I'm not a person who easily voms, you know? Um, So I now for sure will always remember that you can easily vom based off. Especially while I'm eating it, talking about it in that, like it's, you know, it's after the fact we can talk about whatever, but like in that moment in the moam, it's yeah, it is triggering. Look at we learn new things every single day about our friends. And I think this is a good way to take an opportunity to learn how to resolve things live in front of people that are <laughs> watching it. And, um, and this also goes to show that like, we're all different and we have to vocalize things that are different. Shut up isn't a trigger word for other people, but it is for Simona. She didn't grow up with a bunch of siblings that yelled that at her all day. I did. Mm-hmm. Right. So you know, different strokes, but I love you and I'm sorry. And I didn't mean it, it was reactionary because I was going to throw up. <laughs> so I apologize. I apologize totally. sincerely. Well, thank you. Thank You're you welcome. so much. You're welcome. Um, so let's talk about pleasant flavors and we will go on to our last one, right? Yeah. Let's okay. Do this. So The last one, and if you listen to our first Kit Kat episode, we were hoping that the last green wrappered Kit Kat that we would try was going to be wasabi flavored, but it ended up being matcha, which is fine. Uh, But I'm hoping that this Kit Kat, I don't think it's going to be wasabi. I think it's probably going to be like some dark chocolate shit or whatever. (laughs) Um, But it's a, it's a pine green Kit Kat and um, it just says break. And I think it also says that in Japanese underneath it, mine has a bowl of ramen on it. Lauren, what does your picture have? <clears throat> mine picture makes no sense. Um, it looks like, you know, when you're at camp and there's like the speakers on a pole. <laughs> oh, because it's telling everybody to take a break. Oh, okay. It's That's announcing why. it. I, think. I was and thinking I guess- <laughs> about like the food of it. I'm like, I don't know. It's like dinner's here. Like... <laughs> parties yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, um, here, but we like, also have this other break. one that we think maybe is matcha, no that's but... that definitely is matcha you sure though. yeah because it shows matcha on the cover of it like that's a that's a cup of matcha okay okay then why would the other one have been matcha i guess i don't know they gave us a couple of matchas i think they're just oh, like oh i don't well. know this is green i don't I know. know this is green i hope it's wasabi i hope i hope 
Smells like matcha. Smells like matcha. But it's darker than the other one we Should had. Should we open this last? That's what I'm saying. Matcha. Let's just open both of them just in case. All right. I think that they're both going to be matcha. Maybe one is just a deeper flavor of matcha. This is a lighter green. The matcha. matcha That's what I'm saying. This was. So this is the new one I just opened. This one is what we ate last time. This one is darker. So maybe this is wasabi. I don't know. I feel like wasabi would be lighter color. All right. So which one are we trying first? The dark. I'm gonna one? try the darker one first. Okay. I don't know what this is. This doesn't taste like anything. It tastes like grass a little bit. It does taste like grass a little bit, but not matcha grass. You know, matcha has a grassy flavor. This doesn't taste like matcha. It just what tastes a little this? bit like Hinto grass. Kit Kat. What is this? <laughs> is this triggering for you, Lauren? It is, you're looking like you're not happy. It's getting more and more where it tastes like I'm eating grass. Like I bit the grass at like a like a smoothie place. You know that grass they Oh, sell? maybe it's um not wheat germ, but wheatgrass. Maybe it could be wheatgrass. Maybe it's wheatgrass. That's exactly. Oh, it has a real bitter. Do you taste that bitter? Yeah, that's why my face looked this way. Yeah, that's not matcha. No. I, I guess I'm gonna go with wheatgrass for that this one. Is, no one should eat this. That's it. That's that's a no for me, dog. I'm gonna <laughs> say it's a no for me, dog. But you know what? I like that we tried it and it was weird. Yeah, I'm so yeah. glad that we tried it. And now we know. Don't choose dark green Kit Kat in a variety pack. Yeah. So, and I'm pretty sure that this other lighter it's green matcha. is just going to be matcha. But yeah, I'm let's try gonna... it. It doesn't have a strong matcha flavor. But I feel like this wheatgrass flavor will not leave my mouth. <laughs> and drown it out with some coffee or something. I'm drinking chai this morning. Okay. Like I still, I still taste the wee grass in my mouth. I'm so sorry. This is the price we pay for this pod. I mean, I like that. It's a weird one. Like I'm like, I'm all for that, but I, I really wanted it to be wasabi so bad. Well, we'll have to find it. Specifically. We're going to have to find wasabi. So can I tell you some of the other ones I would really like us to try? Honestly, if you guys want to vote on some of the ones for us to try too, I'm going to name some. Yeah. Okay. So there's a rum raisin one out there, which I think would be cool. Okay. <laughs> Wasabi. There's also a hot Japanese chili pepper mm. or chili powder. Sorry. Um, there's another, there's a soy sauce one. Okay. Um, there is a brandy and orange one. Okay. And then um, this sounds so gross. Um, oh, I perk up when you say things it's like called that to sports me. drink. <laughs> So Gatorade flavored Kit Kat. Kind of. Yeah. Which I think sounds so gross. And then there's another one called salt watermelon. Salt Bay. I would like to try salt Bay flavor. <laughs> <laughs> so um, those ones I would like, I really, I mean, there's other ones. There's like maple. There's a Kobe pudding one there, which is like a flan flavor. They said, um, which I think isn't going to like that's just going to be like a vanilla. -y yeah. That's what I'm saying. Flavor. I want one that has something like, like a it rum a raisin. Punch. I feel like rum raisin could have a punch. Wasabi for sure. Chili, the, the Japanese chili powder for sure. Um, and then like soy sauce, I think would be cool. Like just to see, cause that has a definite flavor profile and then sports drink sounds so gross, but like, I'd like to try it. I bet it won't translate that well. Maybe we'll not. See. If we but can like, find it. Yeah, I think great. it would be great. Um, anyway, so that's, I mean, that's it for today. Uh, oh, wait, what are we rating wheatgrass? <laughs> oh, zero. Okay. That's that's as bad as the cheesecake one. For but me. you gave a one, too. Oh, I gave a one to the cheesecake? Yeah. Okay, it's less than cheesecake because it's less the grass. It tastes like grass. It tasted like grass. I mean, I guess some people like that flavor, but this girl does not. Who, cows? Oh snap! <laughs> <laughs> it's the cow Kit Kat for yeah for yeah. cows. 
make cows cow. happy with this one. <laughs> well, this was um, a really mm. fun episode. I like, there's still, again, we talked about, we might do some more of these in audibles. This might even translate over to season three um, in the future, but we, I like, this was the greatest idea. Simona, thank you for keeping this one moving. Cause I hearted it. My pleasure. Great. All right. Until next time. Keep Zacking. Zacking.